Bomberman GB. Um, so there's quite a few Bomberman games for Game Boy. And uh, I have Bomberman 2 and Bomberman 3 already, so I decided to complete the collection kind of with Bomberman, the first game. Uh, kind of. It's a little confusing. There's like four Bomberman games for Game Boy. Anyway, but they have like different names in the US and Japan and I don't know. I get confused easily, but this is the uh, first game in the trilogy. Um, I have Bomberman 2, the American version. Uh, Bomberman 3, I believe, is a Japanese-only release, so I have the Japanese version of that. I decided to round it off with the first game in the series. So Bomberman GB, this is not to be confused with the American game called Bomberman GB, which is actually Bomberman 2 in Japan. Uh, and, yeah, it's confusing. The worst part is I need to decide where to put this in my collection. Does it come before or after <laughs> Bomberman GB American version in the list? Not to be confused. So, that's that. <laughs> Let's see. I picked up Puznik. This is a puzzle game um, that I got. I don't really know much about it, but I got it recommended from someone online. Um, from what I can tell. So it looks, at first glance, it looks like a, a tile-based puzzle game. Kind of like Tetris Attack. Like any standard uh, match three game. But... Uh, it's not, uh, it's, there's no random generation in it. It's, uh, it has set levels. So whatever, the game developers design levels in it and the trick for the player is to try to, try to clear all the blocks in, in that level. So no randomness. This is much more like, uh, what is it? It's not like the randomness of Tetris or Tetris Attack or Dr. Mario or Puyo Puyo. Instead, it's more like the stages in uh, Quirk or Boxel, those kind of games. And you try to work your way through all the puzzles. Um, yeah, it's kind of an original idea. <laughs> I've only been smart enough to be able to beat the first two, maybe three stages. So this one's going to be a, a, a slow burn <laughs> for me. Uh, let's see here. I picked up Last Bible. So this game was uh, never released in the... It's an RPG. It was never... I, I'm sorry, it was released in the U.S., but only for the Game Boy Color under the name uh, Revelations the Demon Slayer. And uh, I bought it when it came out. It kind of became one of my favorite RPGs. I played through the Game Boy Color version multiple times. And uh, I especially love... <laughs> the, the gameplay is kind of, kind of garbage. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a guilty pleasure. I call it, it might be my favorite, uh, my number one guilty pleasure game for the Game Boy. And uh, I've played through it multiple times. I love the music in the game. Um, but yeah, this is the, uh, the Japan-only original Game Boy version. And I decided to get it just because I love the, uh, the other version so much. So kind of a piece of history for me. Um, here we go. These two games. There's actually... Uh, so this is Momotaro uh, Thunderbolt 1 and Momotaro Thunderbolt 2. And Momotaro being uh, the little peach boy, the little, uh, what's it called? Uh, fairy tale about the little boy and the peach. So, I mean, that's why naturally, of course, they make a video game. He runs around throwing peaches at people because, you know, I don't know. It's a video game. But uh, I tried them out briefly and decided I needed them for, um, because... The main gameplay mechanic, you can kind of see all the little versions of the main character. On the front here, we've got a little cat, um, a little monkey, a little bird. Uh, so you pick up power-ups and you put on suits to get uh, um, like special abilities from animals, like a flight ability or a soaring ability or a high jump ability. Uh, not unlike uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 or even the other Game Boy game. Um, what is it? Crayon Shinchan 4? Yeah, I love the mechanic of picking up picking up uh, suits that give you different abilities. I don't know, maybe it's just the nostalgia of Super Mario Bros. 3. But regardless, they're uh, pretty simple games and have fun, simple gameplay. Also of note, I believe these might be the only two licensed uh, Nintendo Game Boy games with nudity in them. I might be wrong, but yeah. And when I say nudity, I mean like <laughs> body parts represented by a single pixel. You know, it's a Game Boy. 
but yeah, kind of goofy. Stuff, some kind of stuff that doesn't get released in the U.S. All right, the last game here. This is, this is kind of funny. So uh, it's called so it's a Japan only game. Uh, Masakari Densetsu something something RPG Hen, and uh, yeah. So I actually don't like this game. <laughs> But we all have different reasons for collecting games. Most of my Game Boy collection, uh, well, I mean, the Game Boy was really important to me growing up. Um, it was, I don't know, a significant part of my childhood. Anytime, I was always saving up money to get new games. It was my favorite thing to do, was save up games, and I played it every day. I had so much fun with it. And uh, I still have all those games, almost all of those games. And any game I got rid of, I was able to recollect. Now, when I was an adult, I did spend some time in Japan, and this was one of the games I picked up uh, when I was there from a used game shop. I ended up selling it because, I mean, it took like 10 seconds before I realized, wow, this game's really not for me. But, uh, I don't know, I've just kind of... I like... it's good memories. It's memories... Uh, I ended up uh, purchasing it again recently in this set. Um, because it's good memories of uh, my time in Japan, um, of stuff I've collected, and, you know, not every game, mo most of the games, almost every game I get is, uh, you know, I do research, and uh, I th they're really fun. They're games I want to play. I don't have a collection just to have stuff sitting on a shelf, in general. I really want to play all these games, um, and I have played most of them, <laughs> and I love them, but it's okay to have... Uh, um, something in it just that uh, sparks joy. I don't know. <laughs> it makes me happy to see it.